You know, the more I look back at this park, I always think to myself, wouldn't it be great if the, the park that I had, the more it gave, it wasn't going to be so many problems from the get-go. What I'm talking about here, I'm going to explain after this intro. Borkers, I'm Jalen Falf, and welcome back to Planet Coaster. Last time we were here, I've explained a lot in terms of what was going on. Plus, I've added a station building with a functioning coaster door to the Zenith ride. Now, in terms of um, how this Planet Coaster door is supposed to work, I've made, had to make a couple of changes for this to even work properly. Well... First off, let me go into the Zenith ride and go into triggers. This is actually the first time I've had to use triggers in an actual ride. Now, for those of you that are willing to have your have these rides named after you, this may apply to you as well. If you want triggers in specific areas with specific scenery, then please let me know what you want on your ride to make it you. But with this trigger sequence, I only have like one trigger sequence attached to this to make this door work. And that is specifically this one at the station right here. All you have to do is just set the, set the point down where the coaster actually passes the point. Then once, then once you have that going, you then set a, you then set the coaster door to that trigger. And then when you go into like say here, Set the thing to open door, pause, close door, and for the for the function of the zenith and the way that's working alongside the length of the car itself, I set this one to 6.5 seconds. But this trick, this this uh, length can also vary for you, dependent on which coaster you're also working with. If it's instantaneous, maybe shorter. If it takes longer, then definitely longer. Work with the size that you have. It's my advice for that specific thing. But as far as that's concerned, that is all I had to do post-video for this particular ride. Now, there were some other changes to the entire park as well that I've done off-camera, which does include station scenery. So let me go over that as we go. First order of business is some major changes to the monorail itself. And not necessarily the stations, but actually it relates to the track. More specifically, I go all the way over here where I have the go-karts track. Because I actually had to relocate the track for the monorail away from the station to make the station building work. More on this later. So all you have, so all this monorail does is just pass over this cascade, the water slide. More on this one later. And I will go, and of course it goes... Again, over the speed, just not this particular go the go karts, just not over the station. It just goes over this little hairpin over here, and then comes back around. It's still the same monorail. It's just the rerouting. It's not really too much of a problem. It's just yeah. Sometimes you just have to edit things to make things work. And speaking of editing, this little carnival section over here has a major change. If you already noticed some specific loops on one side of the carnival area as a whole. Of course, with the traffic jam over here, it's probably not going to be too much of a disaster anyways, given not very many people are going to be passing this point anyway, given how high scenery this and the jungle are. Then when you go back all the way over here, it's all of a sudden kablam, less to work with, but still a lot of guests coming over here as a whole. But for real though, I did have to start replacing rides. There is going to be another new ride down the line. Like I've been saying before, if I go all the way over here, I'll explain that late, I'll explain that after, but I replaced this. This is another thing from the Steam Workshop. This is another SLV from the Steam Workshop. This one's called Triple Looping. Oh, and people are starting to say it's so expensive. What price did I set this to? For ten nineteen, the price is set to thirty dollars and sixty cents. Hmm. I wouldn't see a problem with that, unless 
Let's just set it to $30 even and see how that fares, because if anything, the 60 cents might actually be blowing things over. If it starts to become a problem again, then chances are I'll have to start reducing prices across the board, but for now, it's worth it. But again, Triple Looping is the newest ride to our Planet Coaster system. This replaces Thriller, which if you remember very carefully, I'll go ahead and set up a blueprint for Thriller in a particular open area. I don't know which open area, though. Perhaps over here by Griffin would be nice. So if I typed in Thriller, I have a lot of coasters in storage here. But if I go to Thriller, you may notice that... Some of these loops are lopsided. Some of these loops uh, start going into the diving territory. And some don't even look like loops at all. They look more like corkscrews. When I think of a carnival coaster, I tend to think that it contains a lot of loops, less corkscrews, more dive bombs. Excuse me, not more dive bombs, but less dive bombs. What I mean by dive bombs is, have a look at Griffin over here. The one from uh, Bush Gardens, Williamsburg. This particular opening loop here with the twist at the very end here. That is particularly what I'm talking about when I say, um, I think that's a twist dive, but the dive I'm talking about is on Thriller. Speaking of Thriller, I do have to unsubscribe from it. It is a little bit awkward for my liking and I cannot accept it. So there you, it's done live. But apart from that, um, triple looping, much better. If you guys want this, this is also on the Steam Workshop. I will provide a link to that down in the description below. Now, in regards to what I said about the um, future of this ride, there is open space here by the jungle that really needs a lot of TLC. So my intent is to, at some point after this recording, go into my workshop again. I have another coaster that might fit this particular ride, particular area as a whole. I won't tell you what it is, but I will surprise you for when that episode arrives in two weeks. But aside from building and everything like that, there is a lot more that was done across the park. I'll start back over here with Griffin again and go down here to where the scenery is. I do have someone in mind. There are several coasters in this park that I do already have someone in mind, but haven't contacted yet in regards to... Um, when their name's going to be on it, whether their coaster is going to be colored around it. Somewhat kind of fitting in a sense to them, but I haven't contacted them yet about it. So once I'm done with all the scenery here, I'll go ahead and start contacting people who I think might be worth their place in these rides and see how they go. But as for Griffin itself, the front sign says something the Griffin which is going to take, a na take the name of the original Griffin of the Busch Gardens Williamsburg version, which doesn't have the Williamsburg um, scenery from Busch Gardens, unfortunately. It came without it. It's a, it was a basic thing, which g allowed me open opportunity to do whatever I want with it. It all ultimately turned into a uh, mostly underground Athan coaster. This is um, the Athan dive coaster for Planet Coaster. But anyway... Aside from this, to try and get the queue path to work pro to uh, function with its with its uh, beautification, I decided to add a couple of uh, if I click on these the, the petunia bushes across the thing as well as a couple of trees to indicate some things. There is a awkward street lamp over here that I placed way back in a couple episodes ago, but that's fine. That's fine. If I ever need to rework that, I can definitely rework that. Perhaps if I just moved it over here, that would be nice. But for now, let's just see what's up as we continue forward. The thing continues down here, and the queue continues up there with all the trees and everything like that. The trees start to get a bit awkward as I go, but that's okay. Exit path I don't care about because it's all about the queue, baby. And then when, it come, when you come to the station, you start to see, oh, remember the castle theme from the front entrance of the park with this ornate signage? There's no ornate signage when you get there, but the castle walls stick as you go. In order to keep the lights intact, I've decided that there should be a hole here to keep the light intact. And of course, obviously, to make sure that a coaster works properly, there should be some sort of archway here. The archways on the castle-themed scenery aren't really the best. We do have this station surround piece that also works the same way, also functions in the same way which should also provide some good use as well. So with that said in mind, it's not bad, 
at least it helps to keep the underground station the way it should. If it does look bad, then maybe I'll go back to it, but for now, it still works. Going back to the, um, the natural scenery aspect and going into Underang, where I've actually done some heavy duty work here. We've, I've labeled entrance and exit specifically on this one. I've also added a signage here to indicate that you are entering the Underang here. Like attached to a fence, sort of. But yeah, I definitely need some supports for this at some point. I will make sure that that is done. Of course, working around existing path work doesn't always seem to be the best in mind. So when we do, when I did get around to it, I, all I did was just add rocks underneath. There are a couple of spaces where I do admit that I did want to place like more rocks as I went. I mean, I could do that off camera just to give you an idea of what I wanted to do. But in either case, both Underang and Griffin, I will go both to those to both those rides and show you exactly what the, what uh, happened with the cube paths. I could not get both Griffin and Underang within what I could build in that uh, in that period to above seventy five percent. Now I could actually do that for Underang with the space that I have left down here. But for Griffin, I have absolutely no idea apart from moving some items around, adding some more items to the queue path that would actually help this ride. So post your comments if you guys want, if you guys uh, have any uh, ideas for that. Moving on though, we now go from the back of the park to the front of the park where the, the focus of today's episode will be and we go to the water coaster, the cascade design. And the first thing you will notice is the little um, half-assed chain lift peak house over here. I don't know what you guys call that, but it's reminiscent to the particular type um, tower houses you would find on log flumes, any particular water ride you would find in an old fashioned like New England style park like for take for example um the log flume at canopy lake park or yeah that's the only thing i can think of particularly those types something like that except i do not have any seats to um for, for staff for staffing you know it's not like that at all like i don't have a ladder for staff i don't have like seats for staff think of this as like an unattended unattended tower but as far as all of that's concerned, we do not have anything else attached to the cascade except when we go underground. Have a look down here at this. When I was going through all of this, I, I kind of also wanted to approach this with a little wooden, if you look at it very carefully, like a wood, like a wood cabin style home, similar to, if we go back all the way over to the monorail in the jungle area. Recall that I built the, the thing over here, the station building over here with wood pieces instead of um, the panel pieces that I had on the rest of the stations. That's exactly how I did it, except because the station here is also underground, I had limited work to deal with. There was no roofing, no, um, no extra walls to work with. I had to also had to leave this open in a sense to make sure that everything was working properly. Because you also had the entrance and exit on two separate caves as well. But to beautify the rest of the park as well, I did make some level of attempt over here to build a waterfall. If I played back this very carefully, I did make so some sort of attempt to build a waterfall that would blend in just nicely with the rest of the walls and still function the way it is. Unfortunately for us, this does not look like the waterfall we're after. So if you have any ideas on how this blends in, how you want, how this would be able to be blended in, then feel free to let me know down in the comments. I can definitely have a look at that off cam. But for now, let's just stick with what we got from here. And since we're in the area, I will also like to go back to the speed over here. This one, notice the gigantic level of scenery I have had to put in here, especially 
inside the station building, the new station building that I have here, particularly as well with the city style walls, the city bricks, the roofs that come with a normal standard city issue skyscraper type. Unfortunately, this is not a skyscraper. This is something more along the lines of a standard issue um, city style house that would normally be host to go-kart races. And the go-karts are here. I'll get to the rest later, but notice how I've put a variety of um, flowers around the area. More specifically, I put a series of rose bushes. Then when you go inside, you'll notice a couple of dahlia, a couple of dahlia bushes along the walls. Uh, to indicate that's not where Kess was supposed to go, but it is a beautification thing to keep the guests interested in the race. Like, think of it as like a prize for winning one of the races in the entire um, go-kart scene in this park. The cue path as well should also be noteworthy as well, because every single inch of this cue path, including the priority pass cue path over here, is reminiscent to that of, um, has some reminiscence with the roses, the, of the flowers that you'll see across the thing as well. Um, whoever, I mean roses are default. Roses and dahlias will be default for this one, but whoever gets this go-karts, I doubt I'll be able to paint the track or the walls much, but even if I did, your name will still be on it, and I'll try my best to collect and color flowers of your choice, as well as color them in your Fursona's colors if you're in the fandom. So with that said in mind, um, there's another thing I have to address, and that relates to the particular um, coaster that we're going to be building a station for today. So recall that the tunnel for the, for the, for the go-karts looked barren. Like, over here with the Cascade, this tunnel was looking all natural. Like, it meant to be, it's meant to be natural. Like, go underground here, you're entering a tunnel, something's back here, you're not gonna know what it is, but you are already here anyways. This one, on the other hand, I wanna kinda had, I kinda wanted to give it the feel that this was like a roller coaster type tunnel, so I decided to add a couple of columns and panel walls I tried my best to include something, but if you know how tunnels work in some amusement parks, this is probably not the best choice of blocks to work with. Like, I have panel column and panel wall. Those are the only things I can find. Tell me how the best solution is for this. I, this is the best I could do, but tell me how you would have approached this. Similarly, on the other side, I did, or at least tried to, accomplish the same principle over here. Now, because the tunnel was semi-shared between the Malice Unchained hybrid as well as the go-karts themselves, they both got the same thing, the tunnel-style um, columns and walls. Similarly, if you go all the way back over here, I did the exact same thing with this side of the hybrid's tunnel. Instead, this time, I surrounded this side with mist to indicate Oh, there's something mysterious in here, but what? But now that that's out of the way, that's... The Malice Unchained is actually the coaster where we're going to build a station building for. But I don't know what, and I have absolutely no idea where I'm going to go with this. So, let's just sit, hope, and hope for the best and see what we can do. The current prestige for this one is very low, rounding out to about 595 and a prestige of 2% in the queue. So, I want to increase that. Let's see what I can do and start things off. I don't want to go with the natural theme like I did with the underring. No. I think my efforts are probably going to go more towards... Um, if you recall going back to the panel walls, I think I want to try going back to panel walls again. There isn't a whole lot I can do with the other types of scenery around, but in terms of the themes that they go by, like there are some that abide by the fantasy theme, some that abide by the adventure theme, those would go by the jungle. This is not the jungle. Some go by western, some go by spooky. 
I'm not going to go by any of those and instead go back to the neutral ground that we initially started with from the very beginning um, with of all this with the panel with the modern style walls. Particularly, we go back to panel walls. And, and this is in a similar vein to if you go all the way back to the coaster that I built, my success story that's built off of the design for Steel Vengeance at Cedar Point. That that has a station building of its own with panel walls, wooden rooftop to indicate, oh, this is nice. Um, if you also recall in the Frontier Blueprints as well, when I started building the shop areas as well, it's the same type of building you would find here on these particular buildings, the roof, the wall, even um, the molding. I think for this one, it, um, I did not include molding in my initial builds of both the, the build for the success story as well as the builds for the monorails. If I go back all the way down here, I can easily tell you that this is not the best solution for a um, hybrid coaster. What should I build here? I'm going to go back to, if I go to building, I'm not going to go to building here. I'm going to go in via this way, like I've always been. If I go in here and say, start building on station grid, then it starts there. And what's it build? Well, the building is right there. So where do I go? I'm going to first go into the section labeled walls and go into panel. I'm going to be starting off with the simple panel theme, but recall that I said I have not decided who should be after this coaster. So when I go to the standard issue panel, like panel, wall, panel walls, the four meter ones, maybe even some sloped ones if I wanted to, Let's start with the 4 meter ones and see what ends up happening. I'm actually going to start off with like a square arch way, like this one. One for the Q path over here, and then if you go all the way back here, you can indicate... Oh! Oh! Now this is something easy I can work with, okay? See this exit? See this exit? I'm going to hit done for a minute. I'm going to start building off that, that piece in a minute. But notice how the exit is way off. And I know I'm probably gonna be able to do this. If, let me go to customize and move exit. Am I gonna be able to... I'm probably not gonna be able to do it just like that. Let me go ahead and wait. Let me go ahead and get these customers off the path first. Like that. And then get them away from the path just so we can get that piece organized. Because this, the piece is going to get deleted anyway. It's not like it's going to bother. I'll go ahead and replace the path as well. Uh, not with the dark path, not with the dark red path that I have there. That's for another thing. I got to go back to the purple path that I started with initially. And notice how I'm using a different style of camera. Recall that I was using for the whole duration of this Let's Play, I was using the camera will follow function for the camera. This one, if you look look closely at how it operates, I'm using now camera will follow and rotate. It actually rotates based off of your direction, your cardinal direction that you're going. So I could easily just go in, be like that, be like this if I wanted to, if I were working with a cue path, but really I just want to go like this, and it does that. Now if you'll also notice that the camera just suddenly turns around, that's part of the function, because you never know if you're going to need to start start fiddling around with this path again. Chances are, you will. Now, going back to the building here, I'm going to go back to this, go edit building with selected part, and then rework the um, let's go wall pieces. It's going to be there. So we're going to go panel... Actually, arches. That's the one we want for the panel square arch that we were initially working with. Now, as far as this is concerned, we're going to start working with the half arch now because this is, if you recall from the other pieces that I've been building, this functions in a similar vein to that of the, um, this functions in a similar vein to that of the, the panel types that you would find on the other builds that I've done. For example, Jalen's Escape from Madness, the Steel Vengeance type. 
as well as I believe I've also did I use something similar? I used a modern style type wall of a of a concrete form on this zenith right over on the zenith over here, which also has the same shape archway. On over here, when I should be all the way back here. There we are. So that's our arches. I'm gonna go back and work with walls. Can I start by going through windows? There's not really much I could do with the um, station operator's area because they have an open space with that archway already over there. Really what I could do is put windows. I have yet to use windows on most of these areas, so I think I'm gonna do for this one windows every other on the front. And then for the back, I kind of want to, let me go ahead and see, can I still do station surrounds if I just go all the way down here? This is something new that I kind of want to try, but if I did, not that, but if I did this and this, this might be my first attempt at covering up some ugly structural, structural area of the station itself, but it might not be the best at, at covering up structural because as you can see, there's some holes here that could pr probably use some filling of which if I can try my best to flatten out, I'll go ahead and try that myself. It's probably not gonna work, observe. I mean, it does work in the slightest. It may have covered up a few bits and bits and bogs here and there, but there's still a little bit of a, a space down below that could really use some work. I don't know how I'm gonna be able to do that. But we have also, if you notice, opened up an opportunity for this specific coaster, and I think I'm gonna do that as well for when we get to, when I get to Zephyrus off camera, is I'm gonna go in and add some are we working with two meter walls now? I think we might be working with two meter walls now. If I go back here and then do this. Now I don't know if this will work if I try going this way as well. Like that. There you go. That's something I can do. And I do the exact same thing here. Turns out I might also be able to do the exact same thing on some of the other rides that I've already built stations for. So those stations aren't really finished completely, I'm just gonna say that right now. Not not everything is to date. This park in itself is also a work in progress as it is, so why should I even bother saying, oh, this ride is complete when it actually isn't? Oh. Before I even forget, there's that thing I could do. Oh, and another. What am I doing here? Why am I forgetting these things? Now come to think of something that I could possibly do. I have one thing I could do. If I do the, lo the curves again, if I go back to the curves again, I can try a different style roof compared to the others that I've tried. If I did that, if I did that, and then if I did that, that's one start, right? I don't know, could I do a two meter slope with that? Let's see, if I did two meters, because that fills that slot, that side. So I don't know, is it... Am I able to get like a full on arch from one piece, or do I have to use the high curve here and then work off of that? Like, I don't see anything that could easily be worked off of with this. Although, although, maybe instead of curves, I could just stick with the standard issue slope. Like, let me go ahead and demolish these and give you a heads up on how this is gonna work. Including this piece, because I'm gonna demonstrate. All right, let me show you. So instead of curved pieces, we're gonna use this slope here, right?
We're gonna build this slope, then this one, then go back here, go this one. Because ultimately what we end up having in the end is I kind of want to try the roof in a different fashion compared to the rest. Then these walls should cover that. I mean, I could also put windows there, but that's kind of tied for um, my liking, don't you guys think? On another note, I could also try a thing with the Q-Path as a whole and see how that works, but then again, it might also require me to make a couple of adjustments to the station itself. So... You know, I think I'm gonna do just that. Trial and error, everybody. It kind of fiddles with yourself a little bit, so I'm gonna go ahead and demolish this entire thing. This will be rebuilt. Don't worry, this will be rebuilt. But I'm gonna do a thing. And this is gonna be a surprise to all of you, so... Hold your butts. Close This rat's closed. And I want to see if everybody is off the ride first. Is everybody off the ride? Yes, they are. So that should cover that. Now let's go in and edit the track. Because, ultimately, that station... We're going to try putting... We have entry left, exit left. I'm gonna try entry left, exit right. Haha! -ha. Because I wanna try a thing with the Q path that not all, everyone likes to do. And to demonstrate, I may have to do some reworking. Let me go ahead and place the exit path. We're gonna place it in the very back. I kind of want to go on this side to stick with what we got. So I'll be back with the building of the path, and I'll catch you guys when I can. Here's something some of you don't even know when you're building these paths. Sometimes accuracy is important. My guess is that I'm going to have to use accuracy here. So first thing I want to do is, if I don't want a path to connect, I can just hold my control key down and see how it doesn't connect just like that. If I let go of control, then suddenly it connects hold it down again, and it doesn't. This is easy peasy. Now, go back to this. I'm gonna go back and delete this path because my next bit, I've actually learned this from an actual blueprint rather than the instructions up here. So, what's the easiest method to go in and um, build the... Uh, What's the easiest method to keep a coast keep a path straight when you're when you're at the very end here and you want to make sure that the path is straight with uh, not not making that uh, making that curve wonky? Well, hold down Z or Z depending on which side of the Atlantic you're from, and see how straight it is now. Not holding, holding, not holding, holding, and see how that functions. Now I'm gonna go back in here and make an attempt to rebuild what I can, and I'll catch you guys later. Okay, so I'm back. I'm, I'm at this point, but I want to try a thing with the Q-Path. Let's stop building this here for now, and I'm gonna demonstrate a thing. We're gonna delete this entire Q-Path and try to rework it. Observe this. The ride's still closed, by the way. There is good reason for this. I bet you I may have to test it again. But even if I did, it would have to work like this. Instead of working with the 10-foot cube path, I'm going to try my best and work with the 13-foot cube path. I will show you how this is supposed to work. We're going to go like this, have the guests get teased a little bit, and instead of going onto the path immediately, we're going to go up. That's going to get obstructed because of, because of certain features. Darn. But there's no reason for me not to go back in here and fix the path to get it to work. Sometimes you gotta make sacrifices to make ends meet. And I was not working with 13, 33, I was working with 26. No, I was working with 23. Was I? I was. I, I kinda wanted to go this way. Observe 
that doesn't go, that doesn't go, this will go like this. It does look a bit wonky, I know that, but we can easily fix that just by going like that, delete this, delete this, and then I'm going to go back over here and do this. It's straight, I'm aware, but believe me, things will get better. And if these handymen ever get teleported, don't worry, they will get teleported to the entrance. I've seen it happen. But really, I need to get back to my cube path form here. So what ends up happening is I go up like this, and is this the right height that I want? I don't think this is the right height I want. No, it's not. I'll have to go up like that, and then around like this. Is it the height I... Come on. Like this? Not how I wanted this. Maybe I do it like that. Come on. Got it. And then like this. Can I get it? Yeah! See that? Have a look inside the station itself, peeps. You do not want to miss this. And in similar vein... The guests can easily just come right back like this without without issue. But now the descent, because now they're close to the pa Oh, I can still do this. Basically, my principle with this is that I kind of wanted to, to wanted to just work around the roof like that. Kind of like that, with the end being however you please. But here's another thing I learned from a, another coaster designer. If I just did my best very carefully here. Hang on, not like that. I'll go like, not like that. I'll go like this, go like this. And then my auto connect, like I saw like there, should actually go here. I mean, it's not really too much of a problem. It's just... Yeah, that's close enough to the, to the um, angle that's, well... I think you guys get the picture of how bridges should really work. But observe as well. I'll go back to the roof later. Note that I also added a thing back here. To the exit path, of course. I see some park park builders use use path use walls to cover paths. I'm not opposed to this at all. And I will be happy to do the same thing to have to the whole coaster as it is, up to a point. So what do I do? Simple. Oh. Actually, can I... Here, let me fix this. Can I actually do this? I instead go, went from that to this... Oh, the control doesn't want to work the way it's want meaning to. If I went there, that's going to be in the way. I figured that was going to be the case. Oh, although, instead of doing that, note that I can also do this. Because I had all that extra space, and the intent to shorten sometimes needs to elongate another piece of the piece of the cube path. Uh... Can I connect like that, please? Thank you. So what do I place here to make sure the cube path works? S simple. Let's go back into the building. I could definitely build the roof right now. But let's go back at a building with selected part, and I'll show you what I do. The first and most simple case building the curved piece like so, and then start building around this. Excuse me. Excuse? Like this? Thank you. And then, of course, over here, we do the exact same thing. Just covering up some pieces, don't mind me. But my question, 
Is the two meter wall gonna be enough to cover this? The answer is a big yes, actually. We can definitely work with it. We can, oh, not like that, not like that. I actually wanna work like this. Is that gonna be too low for our guests compared to heights? Let me go ahead and undo both of those. I'm going to try working with one meter walls on that. It's like if I went up to here, mayhaps. That should be the same thing in principle, right? But now, I wonder. Four meter wall on this end. Think of this as well as like a teaching tool for someone I know who desperately wants this game as well. Or someone I also know as well may also already know of this stuff because they also have another Frontier game that uses the same building mechanics. It's called Planet Zoo. That is a very amazing game and I love how it works. So yeah, that's something. Although I'm not into animal games myself, it is fun. It is, it is looking very sweet, I'll tell you that. Now, what am I doing here? Why did I build that first instead of... No, don't worry, don't worry, I can, I can um, work around it. I can work around it. It's nothing, it's nothing to, nothing a little derpy blueberry fulf can't handle. If I just went like this, like that, and then Observe if I go like that. And then did the exact same thing if I just went like, not like that, but like, not like that, but like, if I go up here and then down here, that covers that. And then I don't want guests seeing the, the path as a whole, so what I'm gonna do is go like this. Wait a second, what am I? Oh wait, that's gonna be the four meter. I need this to be a... Okay, hang on. That's going to be one, two, three, four, and that covers that. Okay? I'll need four meter to cover the rest of these walls. It's so like if I did this, right? Not from here, but from here. Go back down here, grab that, go back this way, and grab... Can I actually do this? Grab this. Like that. That covers everything. And lo and behold, we have ourselves something to work with. I'm leaving this open for all intents and purposes, but for the other piece, we'll go back to these pieces and work with those, shall we? Go like this, rotate and go like that. And that's gonna be where this stops because then, it, then I can make this freeform. If I wanted to make this specific design like a blueprint at some point, maybe not, but you'll see it in the park. Maybe you want, want, want to save this as your own blueprint as well. Give it an idea and see how this one fares, but... If I showed, if I told you guys I definitely want to make this like a workshop blueprint at some point, would you want to download this with the scenery that I'm building right now? Please feel free to let me know. Oh, and... Like before, with the exception of the start of the queue path, I do not want guests seeing those supports. So, finish this off just like, I can actually get this right, like that. And then a little bit of that piece, except that's gonna cut through, isn't it? God. Actually, no, it's not, it's just a blend. If I hit done right now, it's probably not gonna... Yeah, it's definitely not gonna interfere with the cube path as a whole, so we're good, we're good. Now, how's about the roof? Before I go, many of you may ask, what about the roof? There's a thing that you guys definitely have me caught there. Arches. I'll go back to the arches and put them at each end to indicate the cube paths. 
And then on top of the roof, on top of the roof, I'll go back to the wall pieces and go to the gable ends. Um, which, so which slope were we working with for the gables? Is this this one? We had a one meter gable end, yes. But then how do we work with the gable roofs? Let me go ahead and search up gable to get an idea of how this works. No haunted. Um, what do we got for... What we got for gables? Corrugated iron, gingerbread. I could probably do corrugated iron, but slopes may need to be worked on. Roof, haunted house, Chin Dynasty, ridge tile, um, thatch roof, wood tile. Like I could do wood tile and probably have the same exact thing. So that's just the principal gable. I mean, I have been using wood roofs for much of... for much of this... for much of the builds that it required gable roofs, so... It's not like I can stick with one common theme and be done with it, no. Um, since we have wood tile, let's just put wood back in. I don't want the modern wood roof flat. I still want to work with the... Um, I want to work with the sloped roofs again with the wood tiles. Uh, is this it? Is this the one I'm working with? Yes, it is. I just worked my way this way, worked my way that way, and then this one. We do the exact same over here. I thought I saw an end piece for these roofs. If I think, I think I've got this correctly, I thought I saw an end piece. Let me see. End piece, end piece. Two meter high slope for four meter square buildings. Inner corner. Uh, what do we got? There's no end piece. We have to build the end piece ourselves. So yeah, that would be that roof. Oh, hold on, I gotta undo that. That was a bit too high. Go like this. Think about this little particular series of Planet Coaster scenery builds as like art streams. If you were in the furry fandom, watch Twitch streams of like art content. Think of it like that almost. You're getting the creative side of not just a, not just your favorite furry artist, but if you're if you're looking at a like a future like a pseudo architect or like structural design, then um, this is one of those. Just think of it as like one of those. But now the other thing comes into mind. We already have one side of this roof with a Q path attached to it. What do we attach to the other side? Now let's go back to our frontier buildings, okay? Let's hit done here for now and go back to our frontier buildings. This piece right here, molding. Let's go back to all and do molding. Roof molding flat. That's gonna be our building. But I kind of want to add this piece to the building we already have established and not as a separate building. That would be weird. And I've seen some people do that without realizing. I'm not naming any names. But what I can do, if I'm extra careful enough, I can actually put the molding not there, but as like a little, uh, like a, almost an awning attachment, if you will to the house as a whole. Now, it could be easy on you guys and just say, oh, that molding is uh, part of the building. Well, sometimes you also have to work with concepts of two colors. Recall that many furries in, this fan in the fandom that I'm in, the furries in the furry fandom, their personas represent multiple colors. 
And to get the idea of multiple colors, I'm going to do the exact same thing here as well. Whoever gets their coast, whoever gets this as their coaster, the station building will be colored after them. But the second color will be based off this color that I'm going to be putting onto this roof molding. And if I can't, yeah, the tile roof is also colored as well, so I can definitely apply color to that as well. So if I attach color to, to this, um, instead of FF, 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 let me go halfway between. Is it... If I recall, I think it's 7F, 7F, 7F as gray? Yes as a gray type. Look at that. I mean, I could work with that, but here's another one I could probably do. Let me start adding these things into the mix because I could also do the exact same thing here. Excuse me. Could do the exact same thing here with these roofs, particularly the walls that cover this roof. To differentiate it from the main wall, I could, I could do the exact same thing I did here and put 7F, 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 the grays. Um, I'm telling you right now, this is sort of like a grayish style. There are darker grays on here in this color palette right here. I can actually see that. I just like to use hex coats because nerdy genius. Now, does this look done in my eyes? Well, for the moment, yes. But in terms of finalizing it as a whole, no. What do I mean by this? Well, remember that I said that someone, like many other rides in this park, someone is going to get their name and Sona colors attached to this ride. This includes the track, the track, the trains, the station building. Basically, the if you see if you see over here with the colors of this little particular area over here with the tunnel uh, blocks, those are also getting colored as well. But in a way that the person who gets it either chooses to go by their Sona or as requested. But keep in mind when you also look into the other rides in this area, some of these some of these other rides that you see here, not all of the pieces that I've used for those station buildings are colorable. I'm going to take for example, if I go all the way over to the Griffin. I don't know if this is colorable or not, but even if it is, let me see. Castle wall, four meters. See that? I generally want to try and keep these the same color, but something blended in for the person that I want this coaster to be after, if they accept, will be nice. I will have to contact them in regards to that. But this will happen after everything in the park is beautified. So now that that's out of the way, I want to go back to my Malice Unchained, check to see if a test is required because of that station change. It is. Which requires me to go into testing. I'm not going to coaster cam this because this does require that. I mean, this is basically the same exact coaster from when I first built it, just the only difference being the sides of the entrance and exit. All right, I'm gonna get this going. Catch you guys later. I'll tell you right now, I'm worried about the prestige, not the test ratings, because the ratings themselves will be the same. It's just the prestige I'm worried about. But anyway, catch you guys. All right, that just brought the prestige up to a very beautiful 716 from the previous 595 that was just here. This reminds me that I now have to improve the finances for this significantly. For 716, we're probably looking at, and this is rounded up to the nearest 10 cents. So if I did, I'm gonna go my calculator here. I already have my 
cell phone calculator ready, at the ready. This is 716 times. The guide tells me three cents per one prestige, translating to three dollars per 100 prestige. We got $21.48, but roughly speaking, we're going down to the nearest 10 cents. So the final price for this Malice Unchained, given the current prestige, would be $21.40. But did I say we were done? No, I did not. I still have a Q path to work out. I still have a Q path to work out. This 716, that's just simpleton talk. With this 43% scenery rating, the prettier you look, the more they're valued by guests. Guests are going to think this is good value because the path work is nice. I'm going to have a quick check and recap and back to the building we go because we can probably work the Q path prestige, Q path, um, prestige into the wall work. So like if I did, if I went, let's try not the molding. We're done with the molding. We're gonna go back to the panel walls. Let's go panel. We'll go back to the panel walls that we just had. And let's go with, I can't do curved one meter. I'm gonna have to stick to my two meter walls for this. So if I did this, right, and then covered up the, I mean, this is covering up the railings at this point. I don't mind there being rails across the entire uh, cube path as a whole. It's obviously creator's choice as to whether they want to keep the railings, the guardrails on top of it. But this would also act as some sort of restraint for our guests as, as well, if you look at it very carefully. But now comes another bit of a task. Did I? I most certainly did. In fact, I can also get rid of this in the same way that I had before. And this time, take it like that. Now, I do notice that graphical bug there where the wall doesn't necessarily look nice and doesn't blend in well. The corner is a bit off. I'm aware of this bug, and I don't know if Frontier is also aware of that bug. Does it ever get fixed if I try to place this down? No, it doesn't. That is always there. I do not know why this is happening myself. I mean, if you do, great. But if it were me, I don't know how to handle this. So how to cover those railings? I will have an explanation for this when the time comes. <laughs> but I actually need to, how do I put, that, put this? Can I? Let me see, how can I do this? Me, I'd advance move this, but advance move is just basically this. I could do this, then put the same thing over here. I could do this, try to put it like that. Co duplicate this and put it up here. I would easily move this, but even then that's probably gonna be much. Um, duplicate this, because that covers that. I mean, I am putting two meter on two meter to, it, it would be easy as, as fuck to just put a oh, four meter instead. That would be, pre that would be nice, but I kind of find that it would be beneficial themselves if that were also attached to say, like, um, putting it on a blueprint and dealing with the limits that Planet Coaster gives, mainly right now, Planet Coaster gives a 4,000-piece limit to blueprints. I'm not working with that many items here. So, yeah, easy peasy.
Oh, why am I doing three turns? I need to do one turn, and that basically covers that side. Same thing over if I got careful with it. If I got careful with it, I could go here. I still don't know why that... Um, that slanted wall business is happening. I don't know why it's happening. I don't know how it's happening, but either way, I don't know why it's happening. The railing on there can stay. I mean, no one's gonna, I mean, if an, funny enough, when I was a kid, I always had those dumb kid thoughts of just going underneath the railing and seeing what would happen. Luckily, my parents stopped me, and I'm happy that I've survived all of that. Uh, I was a dumb kid. Wait a minute. How do you blend this in well? Maybe uh, this angle would probably... No, wait, because I actually have this piece in. I need to move you up. I had four me- what, did I already have- I did. I had the path- I had it right there already. I should have you moved, or even worse, can I actually click on you? Oh, there you are. I'm gonna move you up. This is gonna take a while, friends. I'm glad that some of you have, st have stuck around this long just to see the work of what could possibly be my best work in terms of station building. Instead of duplicating this, I'll move you over to this hole here. Like I said, I'm not very well versed in terms of the scenery work, but I'm trying, but I'm finding this to be just wow. That's all I'll say. Now go back down here. I'm gonna go into this little nitpick of a nitpick of a thing here and duplicate you. Yes, I'm also well aware that if I decided, hey, instead of that, I could just go in, set the camera settings with T. That's one thing I could do. But I'm lazy, so that's that. Now I'll go back to these, uh, duplicate you, and we're gonna do the same thing on this side. Uh, again, up until a certain point, like I said, I've opted to limit, uh, excuse me, I've opted to limit usage of these walls to a, to a point. And that point being I don't know. If I needed to, should I actually? This is why I have this. Alexa, flip a coin. You got tails. Looks like I'm not going to add it. I was going to add a square arch over here to represent the start of the building that I wanted to incorporate. However, that coin flip indicates that's not happening. So there you go. A Q path worthy of its honor. Now I could do the exact same thing down here with the exit path. I'm not going to. The real deal is actually capturing the Q path. So now what next? Remember I said those supports, the, the railings looked ugly. Back to the Q path. If I go down here, no, I'm not that's not what I want to build. I want to go into this cue path right here. Cue path here. Advanced settings. Let's get rid of railing on elevated. And watch what happens when I click on this cue.
you can see that if it were if it were visible, like over here, for example, that support, those railings, suddenly vanish. Intentionally, I could also do the... Can I actually... Can I actually do the same thing here? Why is it obstructed? Here, let me move... Let me go ahead and move this real quick. Is the railing still there? No, the railing's still there. I already got it. I already got it. I don't want that railing. Right, back to paths. Back to paths. Q. This railing stays, but it's back here that I start working and saying, this railing goes. This railing goes. This railing goes. And this railing goes. Do I say the same thing for the rest? Certainly not. For future workings, I'll go turn back on railing on elevated to get that to work. All right. That covers that Q path. Check, quick check on the Q path prestige. Still at 49%. How do we enhance this even further? From previous experience, I can also tell you that nature has its way of beautifying a Q path. And what better way to bring in the best than to bring in the Alpine exclusive fir trees? Let's get the blue furs instead. Doesn't matter what size. So if I did nature, right? Uh, how can I increase the size of this and not have to deal with the, th the things being so samey-same every time? Like, I could do this to indicate a re an easy return trip to the station building, yes. But then when we get to points like, say, here, when it comes down to building the Q path, I'm getting, I'm honestly tired of just seeing, I know there's a way to change the size of each of the trees, right? I know there's a way to change the size of each of these trees to indicate, yes, this is, um, this is this tree's size, this is X, Y tree's size, something like that. That's what I'm aiming for right now, is just seeing, yes. The varying tree sizes are all I need. If you know how to work this out, if there's something I can work with just to make this work, then by all means, feel free to post it down in the comments below. I will be most certainly glad that you asked. I have no bushes to work with this. I think just the trees alone are going to probably do it. Let's have a look. 100%. And I think to top this all off, let me go back to a particular lamp that I discovered on the Steam Workshop. Um... We are done with this one, and if you recall from the times that I said, oh, I love the Steam Workshop and how it works, and everybody is there so creative, and now is inspiring me to build my own shit. Well, guess what? I'll take this lava lamp right here, duplicate it, and we'll put one of you all the way to this exact spot have a small bit of light to light up their way. Now, speaking of light, I have another another one for this building. I have another one for this building. The tip tops of these gable roofs, right? The tip tops of these gable roofs. Note that there's a cube path here. I'm gonna go in, close the search. I'm gonna go in, props, wall, lamp. Not spooky wall light. I want something different for a wall light. Wrapped cloth torch. Monster's coach. Uh, lights. 
What have we got for wall lights? Arm light. I could do arm light. I could do... I need something for the wall. Like, what could be beneficial as a wall lantern that is not too fancy? Like, what would fit the theme of this thing? All I have right now is a city-designed, city like, arm light. Like, right this, like this piece right here. This is, the be this is the best I could give. But what if there was something different? Uh, what do we got? There's Oriental, but that's mostly an Asian theme, so I don't want that. I have Spooky Wall Light. Uh, I have Storm Lantern. I could use Street Lights, but... Oh, wait, no, that... Up Light. Up Light, that's one I could possibly do. But is this... Does this point the right direction, though? If I did this... And then did the exact same thing over on this side, right? Like, I could also do one here, one here, one here, and then one over here. And in principle, I could also... Wait a second. Those lights... Are they? Yeah, these aren't the lights I'm looking for. They're pointing in the completely wrong direction. I apologize for bringing those in. That's not the light I'm after. Let me go back to the arm light over here and see how this one works. I think I may have the light here that I'm looking for. So let me see. Light here. Light here. Light here. And light here. I'll have to have a look at the uh, daytime settings as I go through and have a look at these. But I may have to work these around the arches on the way to the entrance. Exceptions for the exit as well. But if I did as well for over here, if I did this, and then on the other side I did this. We're still at 100% cube path prestige, by the way. Whatever ha happens now, it doesn't Okay, I just have one question. Which way are these pointing? Because I have one side going this way, and then if I go all the way over here... Oh my god, I may have to do some rotation. Let me t take care of the nighttime setting real quick and show you how... Yeah, they're not point- they're pointing up, not down. Here, let me do some advanced move, right? Uh, rotate. And then do angle snap rotation rather than... So if I did that, 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 I would cover that. And I can actually do the same principle here since those are on a, a line, basically. I could do this. Why is it on loop? Why are these on loop? I could do stationary. Yeah, let me do stationary. Wait a minute. Oh, those are off. Let me let me put them back on loop. I'm sorry. I need to put these back on loop. My bad. Back to 12 or 1 p.m. rather, back to 1 a.m. now. Those should those should right now not be on until I hit play, in which case they do turn on. Okay. Now as far as this is concerned, let me go back. Not duplicate, goddammit! Advanced move. See, some things just piss me off. And for good reason, too. Now, see how that's much better compared to the direction I had them before? I had an extremely upsetting time with all of these, let me tell you. By the way, when I do the final ride-through of all of these rides, this is basically the time that we're going to be doing them. I've done every single ride in this park 
in the daytime. I don't have to switch to nighttime for every single one of these now. Back to 12 noon, because I'm done with that now. Oh, wait. Two more lights to... Two more light sets to rotate. Sorry. Two more light sets to rotate. If I just did one like this, right? Went... Like, not... I love going too far on these things. And then the same principle over here. See? The work of an architect. Well, maybe not the best one, but amateur at best. So yeah, that is my station building plus Q path prestige for this Malice Unchained with a pretzel loop over here, a pretzel loop, not actually not a pretzel loop, but an inverse loop down here. Inverse figure eight, is it? I It's been a long time since I built this. But such a short coaster, too, that it really deserves the prestige that it gets. Let me go ahead and do one final test. That 716 might just be a fluke after all, given what we just added. Let me go ahead and test, and I'll catch you guys when this is done. So I am back. Final prestige for this incredible Malice Unchained coaster is a mere 1,015. And in turn, it also deserves the honor of getting the same exact price that I gave the triple looping all the way over there. An exact $30 even. Just imagine the income that'll come out of this. Now, with all of that set in stone, I remind you all, my coast, my park right now does not seem to still carry the same level of prestige, the level of profits that it once had. It has had ups and downs. But the more scenery that I've been adding these past few episodes, that is what's keeping this, bringing this park back to a good amount of profit. It doesn't matter what the guests think. It doesn't matter what the guests, how the guests are feeling at that present time. I love seeing a profitable park. And right now with all the scenery, I'm starting to feel like I'm now bringing this park back to what it should be, a profitable park. So guys, that is going to do it for today's episode of Planet Coaster. I just have a few more rides, particularly Coast of the Coaster and Tracked Ride type to build scenery for, and that'll be that for the Tracked Rides as a whole. Before I leave, remember the poll that I posted on my Twitter in regards to which rides should get scenery. Well, between the Chopper's Creek over here, yes, all four of these are getting scenery at the exact same time, but one of these got to become the particular coaster that, got, that gets the on-camera build. So between this Chopper's Creek log flume you see in front of you, between this Wild Mouse that's actually a blueprint from the Steam Workshop and can still be and can still be played around with with scenery, but also if we go all the way to this side with this Hyper Coaster, this Equalizer, I have some ideas in terms of terraforming as well for this one, and we also have back here this snowy, predictive snowy, Ace of Sky bobsled coaster with an underground section and a, de a descent that could probably pass for something great. This could really become a, a park worth a lot of eyes for, virtual eyes for our guests. So this definitely has a place in my heart and will always have such a place. I cannot wait to finish this just as much as you guys cannot wait to have the workshop yourself. Um, whatever I don't, whatever I don't fill in, 
it's up to you to build yourselves. I... I always leave things open for you guys to improve upon. It's not just my building, it's also about the community that can assist if need be. But yes. This is also an opportunity for you guys to have a look at the park one more time, get a chance to have a look at each of these coasters before I consider the options for naming, coloring, and additional scenery if need be. Post your comments down below on some of the things I've been asking over this over the course of this series, or at least this, this um, part as a whole. But other than that, next time we see each other, the winner of that poll was the Wild Mouse. I'll be building the Wild Mouse on camera. And you'll also see some improvements off of the, the Zephyrus wooden coaster all the way over here, as well as the other three coasters that did not win. The Chopper's Creek Log Flume, the Equalizer Hyper Coaster, and the Ace of Sky Bobsled Mountain Type. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, leave a like, post your comments, hit subscribe to the notification bell, share this video with your friends. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Until next time.